Hey guys, welcome back to Chill Vibes Only. Today I'm going to be talking about what the pleasure gap is and why it is so damn important. So the pleasure gap is basically similar to what we would call like the pay gap or any other um, gap that differentiates the treatment of men from women. Um, so with the pleasure gap, we're specifically talking about orgasms and pleasure of all the owners during sexual experiences. So in this video, complete disclaimer, I'm going to be referring to cisgendered women. Um, there isn't a lot of scientific research right now, I don't believe, out there on transgendered. Uh, individuals, so I can't speak to that. I'm just going to speak to what I've researched on cisgender women. Um, if you guys know of accounts or people who are educating us on the pleasure gap for transgendered um, people, please leave comments down below, share those resources. The more information we have, the more power we have. I unfortunately don't have that information today, so I can't be the one to share that with you. But if you do have that types of information, please leave a comment down below to let us know so we can educate others and ourselves on those matters. Um, so yeah, today I'm gonna to be talking primarily for cisgendered women. I'm gonna call them vulva owners as best as possible because I wanna make this as inclusive as possible. Um, and if I mess up or I say something that offends you or um, doesn't, you know, yeah, if I mess up or say something that offends you, please leave a comment down below. Let me know. I want to course correct. I want to always be improving my language and challenging the way that I think about things and say things. Um, and I'm human. I make mistakes all the time and I don't ever want to hurt anybody. So if I say something that isn't correct, please let me know so I can correct it and in turn share more um, better information and help educate others as well. But I'm going to do my best. So bear with me. So cisgendered women are four times more likely to say that sex wasn't pleasurable in the last year than cisgendered men. On top of that, cisgendered men experience orgasm 20 to 50% more times than cisgendered women do. And these are in heterosexual relationships. Um, so I'm not sure. I know that women who are lesbians and are in same-sex relationships experience higher orgasms and higher rates of sexual satisfaction and pleasure than women in heterosexual relationships. I don't know the exact number, um, but I'm talking primarily just for heterosexual relationships here. So basically that gap is even bigger than our pay graph, which means we have a huge problem because our pleasure and our ability to connect with ourselves and experience pleasure through sex is such a big indicator of our stress, of how we feel about ourselves, about how we feel about our partners, um, and it's, it has a huge impact on our mood and our happiness. So this pleasure gap is not okay and it's something that we need to work to close and to get rid of. Women also have reported that they feel the need to perform for their partners, so um, you know, faking orgasms, making it seem like they're enjoying parts of sex that they're not because they're trying to fit into this role or this mold that society or someone has put on them, um, oftentimes they take their partner's sexual satisfaction as part of their sexual satisfaction, um, whereas their partner takes their sexual satisfaction as their own sexual satisfaction. So for example, if I am in a heterosexual relationship, I have sex with a man, he has an orgasm, I will say I'm satisfied, whereas if I'm in a heterosexual relationship, I'm with a man, I have an orgasm, he doesn't, he would not say he was sexually satisfied. He will only say he's sexually satisfied when he has an orgasm. And again, I said he there, I mean penis owner and vulva owner. So women aren't even prioritizing our own pleasure in terms of our satisfaction, which is so wrong. And I feel like the reason why this is, is because in sex education, women are taught to fear about STDs, pregnancy, um, their reputation. Um, and we're never taught about pleasure or how to actually enjoy it. In my personal experience growing up, nobody taught me what sex was supposed to feel like. I just saw in movies that people were, looked like they were having a great time and when I started having sex, I wasn't experiencing anything and I felt like I was broken for so long and it kept me quiet and it kept me in shame and it kept me from exploring parts of myself and, and feeling open and confident enough to express to my partner what I needed. Um, and because of that, that's why the pleasure gap exists, because women don't feel like we have ownership over our sexuality and our pleasure, which we should and we need to begin to do. So the pleasure gap has nothing to do with fixing yourself. You are perfect and whole exactly as you are. You're not broken and there's nothing wrong with you and there's nothing that you need to fix. 
We need to fix the society that we live in and the messages that we send to women and to girls about sex, about pleasure, so that we can close this pleasure gap, so we can have more open communication with our partners, so we can discover our bodies and how we feel and what we need and then communicate that to them so that everybody is getting and experiencing pleasure in the bedroom. It's so important, I'm so passionate about this and I really, really, really think that the world is changing and that we are going to educate our girls and women better than we got growing up and that this gap can be closed. We just need to work together. We need to be more open-minded. We need to be kinder to each other and we need to start talking about this stuff. So that's why I'm talking about it here and I encourage you to talk about it with your friends and family as well. So some things that I want you guys to start doing and to help close the pleasure gap. The first thing is to get to know yourself and to get to know your body. And by that, I mean, learn to masturbate. So some women I find actually start masturbating at a very young age, not knowing what they're doing is masturbating. That was the case for me. I was masturbating since I was probably like five or six years old, having no idea what it was, just thinking I unlocked this really cool part of my body um, that I only had and it was my superpower um, because I didn't understand my body. I didn't understand what it was and nobody taught me that. So if that's you, great. You already know how to masturbate. Play around with your body. See what sensations you like, what pressure points you like, where you like to be touched, how you like to be touched. The more we understand ourselves and our bodies, the better we are able to communicate to others what we want. If you don't know what you want yourself, how are you ex gonna expect anybody else to know what you want? So my first tip and my first thing into closing the pleasure gap is to research your own body, you know, spend some time, spend an hour with yourself just exploring different parts of your body and don't make the goal orgasm, make the goal exploration and pleasure. And if orgasm comes out of that, great. If not, no worries. At least you found some other parts in your body that feel good to you and feel pleasurable to you. Okay. Second thing is once you know your body, you know what you want, you know how to have an orgasm, maybe you're just not feeling, you know, compelled to have orgasms or your desire is a little bit low start to learn about your accelerators and your brakes. So that relates to your sexual desire and the context that you need to have sex. I have tons of videos on this. I will link them down below. Um, but basically what turns you on, what turns you off, you know? Um, learning how to control turning off our brakes and turning on our accelerators is what's gonna help us be more present and aware during sex um, and be more likely to experience pleasure and to experience orgasm. So understanding what you need in those situations is a game changer for increasing the amount of pleasure that you're going to have in those situations. And also obviously communicating that to your partner. You got to let your partner know accelerators and brakes so that they can help you turn off your brakes and turn on your accelerators. Um, my third tip is the clit, the clit, 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 never forget the clit. Even if you don't need a lot of clit stimulation, it's still such a powerful tool. Find your clit on your body. There are so many great like pictures and stuff out there. Um, the vulva gallery is an awesome account to follow on Instagram, um, but find your own clit. See what it's like. There's so many amazing um, nerve endings in our clit. Like it is such a powerful tool for orgasm and it's what about 80% of women need to have an orgasm is through clitoral stimulation. It's not through penetration. So just accept that that's the way it is and imagine to yourself if someone had told you that about sex and taught you that that's how you're going to have sex and have pleasure, what your sex would have looked like differently growing up. And if someone taught your partner, your heterosexual male partner about that's how sex works for women, how they might have treated you differently in the bedroom. And just understand that we got dealt a shitty hand by society and our education systems, and now we gotta relearn this stuff. And that's okay, but we gotta become one with it and we gotta be on board with it. So never forget the clit. If you are a male, heterosexual male, in a heterosexual relationship with a woman watching this video, please don't forget her clit. <laughs> okay, four, um, stop faking orgasms and start talking about during sex, what you need to do differently to have an orgasm. Um, when we fake orgasms, we give our partners, you know, bad cues on what we need and what we want in the bedroom. Um, and it just creates a lot of confusion. So just stop faking orgasms, be honest, communicate openly and authentically with your partner, and it's gonna help increase your pleasure. And then my last and final tip is to talk about this, talk about it with your friends, talk about it with your family, normalize it. This stuff is so hard um, to talk about at first, but the more we talk about it, the you know smaller we're gonna make this gap and the more open people are gonna feel to discover themselves and their sexuality. Um, you can always talk to me about it. Leave me a comment down below or DM me on Instagram at CBO Wellness, uh, CBO Wellness. Um, I'm always open to talking about it and I'm always here for you guys. And I hope that this video, um, you know, 
shine some light onto what you guys are experiencing um, and give you some ideas. Uh, definitely check out the other videos we have on this channel. We have tons of information. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe because that really helps the channel. And I will see you for another video shortly.